Okay, today we are going to learn how to do research using the CSN website and especially the CSN library. First of all, you need to open up your browser. Choose your favorite browser. I like Google Chrome. Okay, now we're in Google. We need to type in exactly where we want to go. So we want to go to CSN. That opens up and we cruise into the website. Now once you're in here you need to know where to go. Instead of using the search bar just go here to the item called quick links. Open that up, scan down to you see library and open up the library. That will open up a website with a whole bunch of other options on it. Now if you wanted to find a book an ebook or a DVD and you knew exactly what you were looking for, here is a good place to go. If you wanted to find articles and online research, here is where to go. Now this is where we're going to go. This is jump starting your research. It gives you a general idea and some general guidelines to follow and we'll click on that right now. Okay, now we're here in the jump start your research area. As you can see, they have everything broken down into steps. Step one, you need to start with a good topic. So if you're doing a paper and you don't know what your topic is, you should probably figure that out before you come to this site. Next thing, learn more about your topic. Here's different things like the Encyclopedia Britannica, there's an Oxford online reference, there's various things that will help you learn more general concepts about your topic and maybe define it a little better for you. Now as I said before, if you have a book or if you know of a book or if you know of a title of a book or movie or ebook that you want to look for specifically, you can use these links right here. Next we have finding different views on your topic. These are different things, different publications that are out there that you can look at and search for about your topic. What we're going to concentrate on is step five because we're going to pretend that you have no idea where you want to go. So we're going to start with EBSCO Complete. Okay, once you access the library or try to access any parts of the library, you will ask to be enter your username and password. So you go here, your username is your student number and your password of course is the password that you set up to log into Angel. Once you've entered your password and logged in, you come to the EBSCO database site. What this is, is a page with a lot of search options on it, as you can see. And we will not be covering any of them. But now that you know where they are, you can come back in and try them. What we're going to do is we're going to go in here and we're going to use the search bar here at the top. Now if you know your topic and you know exactly what you're looking for, you can use the advanced search feature or if you're looking for something visual, you can use the visual search feature. Once you've been in here, it will bring up your search history and you can search for things you've looked at before. Okay, we are going to search for Paris Hilton because that is very relevant and we all love her. Now we have the search results for the Paris Hilton search we just did. If you look over here in the corner, we have 13,719 results for Paris Hilton. Even though we are all big fans of Paris Hilton and want to know everything we possibly can learn about her, 13,719 results is a lot to go through. Over here, we have a refining area. You can look down through here and it lets you narrow your search further and further. We're going to start with the publication date. Since we all know that Paris Hilton's too beautiful to be born before 1965, we're going to take this up to when she's more relevant in today's society. We're going to take it up to 2008. Now once you're in here, you'll see that it asks you, are you sure you want to refine your searches to that? You say, we want to update. What I like to do is I like to press full text so that way it shows me exactly what I'm getting after I do the search.
we click update, as you can see that narrowed our results down dramatically, down to 3,012. Still a lot to look through, and I don't know if we have enough time to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down and we're going to search by publication. The publication we're going to search for is we're going to search for things that are on People Magazine and Showbiz Tonight. Okay, now we have 70 results. That is kind of upsetting because it would be nice to read more about Paris Hilton, but we're going to have to deal with just 70 results for right now. Now we can go over here and we can scroll down through the options and we can find something that's relevant. Oh my gosh, look at this. Paris Hilton loses her cat. We need to find out more. Okay, here we are in the article that we've selected. Paris Hilton loses her cat. As you can see, there's a lot of information on this page. The most important part that we want to look for is at the bottom and the article. Now this article is very short, so it won't take much to read. But if the article is really long, multiple pages, or more than you want to read, there is an abstract up here that gives you a general concept of exactly what's going on in the article. It highlights exactly what you're searching for, in our case Paris Hilton, and since there's a space between the thing, it also highlights Hilton and Hilton over here also. Now we can go down here and read this article and learn that Paris Hilton did not do very well in the movie theaters, which can be relevant depending on what your paper is on. Now we need to learn about a citation because we've decided that this article is very relevant in what we want to do. So now we're going to go up here and we're going to cruise over to the cite section. Okay, a whole bunch of stuff comes up. There's very many different forms of citation out there. The one we're going to concentrate on is MLA, Modern Language Association. Every day I'm shuffling. Okay, what we have here is the MLA 7 reference guide from easybib.com. As you can see, there are many different ways you can cite work. They're using this as a general outline for the six or seven items they have listed. We have on here a book, a chapter, a magazine, a newspaper, a journal, a website, and an online database or journal. The online database is the one you need to pay particular attention to because it'll be the one that you'll be using most if you use the CSN library for reference. Okay, if you look at the top here, it has listed exactly how you should put your format for MLA 7. As you can see, we have the book editor, the edition that it was, for a chapter. You have to pay very close attention to the format you use and the organization of the way it is, along with what to italicize and what not to italicize. The one we are going to focus on the most here is the online database or journal. As you can see, we have the last name, comma, the first name. You have the article, the journal that it came from, the volume or issue, the year, then you have to make sure you have the right punctuation in, pages, that it was a database, you found it on the web, and then the day, the month, and the year that you accessed. The example that they've used is this one right here. Pay very close attention to the format they used and the way that they did it. Okay, now we're going to move on from EBSCO. We're back on the home page. I'm going to go down to the library again. We're going to go to jumpstart your research. And we're going to scroll down to ProQuest. Okay, now we're in ProQuest. Let's go back to searching for our favorite person, Paris Hilton. Okay, now we're in here and we can look around. The results show that we have 20,081 results. Now that's a lot. Down here we have things called suggested subjects. Let's look and figure if one of them goes along with what we want. There's one, Hilton Paris the person. Let's click on that. Okay, as you can see, that has narrowed our results down to 446 results. It's still a lot, but at least it gives us a general idea of where to go from. Now we can go over here to our source types. 
I'm going to choose magazines because last time we went with newspapers. Okay, that has narrowed our results down to 156 results. We're getting better. Now we can look down here and figure out if there's anything else we can use to lower our results down. Okay, let's use date. So far we have the date from 2000 to 2011. That's 11 years. That's a long time. And while we love Paris Hilton, let's look at stuff that's more relevant and current. Once again, let's update our page from 2008 until now. There we go. Okay, as you can see, our results have been narrowed down to 16. That's a lot less than we had before, and now we can go through and figure out if anything in here is useful for our article we are writing. Oh look, Paris Hilton back to jail. That sounds like it's relevant. Let's click on that. Okay, here we are with the article Paris Hilton back to jail. Okay, now you can see the article is Paris Hilton back to jail. It was published September 13th, 2010. And I believe it was on page 27. Now let's read down here and see if it's something that we want to use. The abstract, which is right here, explains exactly what's going on. Down here you'll find a lot more information about the article, where it was, what the source type was, the date, what part of the magazine it was in, everything you need to help you with your citation. Now about the citation, since we've just learned about MLA format, let's go up and see if we can find that. Okay. The first thing that comes up is APA 6th edition. That's not what we need. Let's scroll down and find MLA. There it is, MLA 7th edition. Now we click on that, we hit change, and there's our new citation format. Now we can copy and paste this into our bibliography that we're using for our paper. Okay, let's go back and look at the other database options. We'll close out of this, and now we're back to the main page. We have other options, which is Gale Power Search, JSTOR, and what's the difference between popular magazines and scholarly journals. Well, you guys can read about that later, and you guys can use these other two options later. The thing that I would suggest is ask a librarian. They're very helpful, and they will direct you in the right way to do your research and get great sources for you, and help you with writing your paper. While they won't write your paper for you, it's the next best thing. I want to thank you for watching my screencast. I hope you learned a lot about research. And I hope you learned a lot about how to implement it in future projects you have using the CSN website. These are the sources that I use for the screencast. The Purdue Online Writing Lab, the MLA Formatting and Style Guide on the Purdue Online Writing Lab, I use the CSN site, I use EasyBib the bibliography maker, and I like to especially thank CSN Library for helping explain some references and areas of the site that I had problems with. There are two books that I also use in this reference, the Norton Field Guide to Writing and the They Say I Say book. Once again, I'd like to thank you very much for watching my screencast. Please look for more in the future. Thank you.